Tony Ferguson recently threatened not to fight Charles Oliveira UFC 256 if he misses weight. He posted this on his Instagram and in the caption he went on to say, We are no longer working with my former nutritionist perfecting athletes. At the beginning of this camp I made a conscious decision to trust in what we got here and the results are amazing. I have been competing in athletics for over 30 years and making weight the same amount of time. Weight is good and eating right. I am counting on the Brazilian Charles Oliveira and others to come overweight like usual. So I am calling it now. Case law, short notice fight. Charles Oliveira will not cut weight all week and show up 3-4 pounds overweight and use the excuse of a short notice fight. If he shows up that much overweight, we are not competing. So crew, make sure you visit the kid's page and encourage him to make the weight if you want to see a fight. Israel Adesanya recently received his purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. On his Instagram he posted this and in the caption he wrote, I smoked with Snoop Dogg, I surfed with Kelly Slater, I rolled with Andre Galvao. This has been the highlight of my trip so far, being surprised with the purple belt by Andre Galvao. Although initially I didn't feel like I deserved this, I trust his judgement and I feel like I've earned this. In my short time here I felt my Jiu Jitsu level up. I love knocking people out but it's time to start tapping them out. Henry Sahuda and Jake Paul have been going back and forth on Twitter. Henry Sahuda sent a tweet to Jake Paul singing, I have no idea this dirtbag at Jake Paul was a fanboy. Sign the contract and you might have your dream of meeting your idol Triple C. PS I'm sending you a digital autograph for you baby. Jake Paul responded back saying I'm a huge fan, you're the mini champ, but it seems like I'm your only fan because the purses I buy from my girlfriend are worth more than your fight purses. Where are your pay-per-views at champ? Henry Sahuda responded back saying, oh your pay-per-views. Everyone ordered that fight for Tyson. Nobody even knew you were fighting Smokey Robinson on the undercard. By the way, looting purses from the mall doesn't count as buying. Henry Sahuda ended it off with I'll give you props. At Jake Paul while I was collecting gold medals and UFC belts you were collecting followers. That's nice. They can all follow you to the hospital after I break your face. Here we go, here we go. Right, this one goes out to all the elders still rocking that fraggers. You the man! <laughs> there you get something. Bro, I get the punches, man. Like it's all good, but what are his scratches, man? It's crazy. I got slashed up. Like he had a knife in his glove. First time with my own filter. It was great, man. Jeez, it's cool. Marvin Vittori at the UFC Vegas 16 post-fight press conference says they want to fight Israel Adesanya next. Man, you know, to be honest with you, before I called out Boratini, but Boratini, he just came out of a crazy loss. Why would I even fight him? I'm going to go straight to the title, man. To be honest, you know, I'll be really honest. I, I, I like the fight, but, you know, they, I feel like top five, there's no opposition. There's no real opposition. Like, Cannonier uh, 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 just lost. Darren Till is, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't even think he's top five. Um, Boracinha just lost brutally, and uh, who else is there? Uh, and Jack was number four, so oh, yeah, Whitaker wants to just enjoy Christmas with his kids, which I don't blame him, but you know, it doesn't seem like he really wants to fight the ti for the title. Israel is full of like, he was like, he was like, oh, you know, I don't think I will ever see uh. Uh, Marvin again, like, uh, you know, he will never make it to the title. Guess what? I'm here, you know? So, uh, he, he, you know, he, he thinks he has it all figured out. He got nothing figured out. He's, I, I, I know his true colors. I, I know his true colors. I met him a few times. I fought him. I know his true colors. I, I, I want that fight. Hey, guys, listen. Start a new podcast called Jabs Podcast. All right, guys? Listen, just awkward buddies. First episode dropped today. Listen, if you have Apple Podcasts, swipe up, subscribe, and enjoy. Oh, ball on the wall. Get all the fun and play out of your day with ball on the wall. Oh, 599 $10.99 shipping and handling. That's only $16.99. To get you the new ball on the wall! Oh, $16.99. And a monthly dollar charge for all subscribers. Tune into the monthly videos of Ball on the Wall and get all the fun and play out of your day. 
Kenny Florin on the Anakin Florin podcast gives his thoughts on Marvin Vittori's win over Jack Hermanson. I mean, I think that's a great way to put it. I mean, to be able to take advantage of something like that in a main event spot against a tough dude and Jack Hermanson, I thought really positioned him extremely well. Um, I think I misunderstood, uh, you know, I really uh, misinterpreted uh, Vittori and kind of um, how he fights and what he's been doing lately. I, I think he's a guy that is getting better. Um, I, I think he really performed extremely well. That left hand was firing all night. My yeah. goodness, just brutal shots. Uh, Hermanson is tough as hell. Um, but Vittori just looked on, man. I mean, there was nothing really where I thought he was going to be in trouble. He, he didn't get overly emotional. I thought he managed that well. I was a little concerned with his pacing in the first round. But man, the kind of shape that he has to be in to oh, yeah. keep that pace and, and eat those shots that he did against Hermanson as well, uh, I thought was just amazing. And uh, it was just a, an unbelievable performance from Vittori. Right. And you could see both Jack Hermanson and Marvin uh, Vittori wanted to be there. Um, those guys uh, clearly wanted it. They were trying to take each other's heads off. We got uh, an absolute classic fight because of it. Um, but yeah, I, I think you can see that. Vittori's not here to screw around. Uh, he means it. He's the real deal. Uh, you know, and he's not just a hammer. You know, and, and that's kind of the test I think you, you look for also is that uh, it's fine. When, when you're the hammer, you're, you're out there kicking ass. It's easy. It, it's easy to be a fighter. But uh, when you look at someone and how they respond to adversity and what happens when they start to take shots, um, I thought he proved uh, that he's here to stay and that uh, he's not going to go away easy. Muscle growth and improvement in terms of athletics happens during recuperation. We often underestimate the importance of a day off. <laughs> Guess what we're doing? We're getting the MRI because we're in the bike rack that I was in. Well, we're getting looked at. Still just not right. And my COVID mask. Dana White, the FC Vegas 16 post fight press conference, spoke on why they released you well, Romero. Well, it's it's not just you. I mean, we're going through, we're, we're going to go through some serious cuts here at the end of the year. Probably going to have 60 cuts coming up before the first of the year. Um, and Yoel is, is uh, lost four of his last five. He's 44 years old. Um, you know, our, our roster is very inflated right now. So we're going to have some big cuts coming before the end of the year. You're going to see a lot of a lot of names going here in the next uh, several weeks. Now we're just literally starting to go through the list and, you know, he's 44, he's lost four of his last five and, um, you know, these are the tough decisions you got to make. Guys, I just want to show you guys how beautiful the city of Miami is downtown. Look at that. Nobody's out walking. Only me, the city. Triple C, what's up? What is up? Look at how beautiful, peaceful walk. Hey, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I am bored. I am so bored. What do you guys think of the pitfall field? 